men are more interested in things and women are more interested in people. Do I have that right in the simplest sense? Yes. Okay. How, what is a study? How can that even be measured? What would a study look like that is, that is not just based on someone's assumption, but it's actually valid and it measures like things versus people seem sort of subjective. So how is that mm-hmm. measured specifically? So a lot of this idea comes from some toy preference research done on babies, where basically you have like a wheeled toy versus a plush that usually looks like an animal or like a baby. And you see whether children prefer the wheeled toy or the plush. Um, and so they basically are given both of them simultaneously and they get to select a toy that they want to play with. That's one way. There's been multiple variations, but that's like the original classic version and of the this test. And the idea is the toy with the wheels is sort of a fundamental thing. representation of thing and the plush is representation of human because it's or people because it's got mammalian characteristics to some extent or and then there's been there's been yeah. yeah there's been building on top of that for example like eye orientation where children look to more often when they're infants whether they like focus on faces of other people and interacting oh, with faces of toys and whether they're more concerned with like things around that um, and so what we see for example in the toy preference test is that Oftentimes, boys select the wheeled toys and girls select the plush toy. Now, I'll be clear. Uh, I don't know if you know Judith Butler. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar. I have a minor in so, gender studies, FYI. So oh, okay. Very yeah, yeah. So you're, with... you're very familiar with Judith yes. Butler. So she, I'm sure you've heard her talk about this study specifically. Yes. I've also heard Deepak yeah. Chopra talk, but that's neither here nor there. But go on. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is where a lot of this idea comes from. And just to be clear, there's a ton of research on top of it. Um, and basically the question is, is that actually evidence of some level of like biological preferential behavior or is socialization so deep and ingrained that it like emerges in infants? My understanding is the toy preference is replicated in primates as well. So yeah, I was going to bring that up. Um, in 2007, there was a Rhesus uh, monkey study, and this has been replicated over and over, where boy monkeys also preferred the wheel toy, and girl monkeys tended to prefer... Um, actually, monkeys were interesting in that they were reversed. So in children's studies, if you give them kind of more open access to both toys, we actually see that boys almost exclusively want to play with the wheel. They have almost no interest in the plush. And girls play with both actually a fair bit. In the monkeys, we saw the reverse. The boys were willing to play with both. The boy monkeys were willing to play with the the wheel toy and the plush. And the the girl monkeys were much more interested in just playing with the plush. Um, So the median was different, but some of the biases on the on both ends were emerging still and so that would be really strong evidence of like there's there's something innate going on here whether it's brain like structuring or whether it's exposure to certain neural like chemicals so example is estrogen and androgen so in these studies they have also looked at like um girls who are exposed to high levels of androgen girls with cah is the syndrome um they so in humans they show the same um oh i need to look this up actually before i say this i I was reading this paper literally two days ago, so I should have and, it. And just to clarify, am I correct in that that primate toy preference study has been replicated not just in rhesus monkeys, but chimpanzees and a variety of monkeys, and it's been pretty heavily replicated? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't followed the monkey okay. line as Fair much enough. recently. Sure. Um, I I'm have a picture just... of Jane Goodall on my wall. I like love primate studies and all that stuff. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I've just uh, actually, like, that study was sent to me, like, last week. So I've just been reading a Got bunch it. on gender. And I'm trying to just read both philosophers on gender and science on gender, like, right now. Do you know, so, do you know, do you know Frames sure. the Wall by any chance? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think he's got a book called Gender from the View of a Primatologist that I very much want to read soon about exactly this. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Um, so when primo- prenatal hormone exposure is is known to influence children's toy preferences, as girls with ch- congenital adrenal hyperplasia, where they're exposed to high levels of androgens, inherit uh, enzymatic defect. Blah 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 blah. Uh, they show more boy typical toy preferences than do their unaffected sisters or controls girls. Right. So they're also selecting wheels, which is more evidence of. Okay, is there a brain? Because this is a question. Can you have? Do we have male and female brains? And the answer might be. Yes, but, is but it it's influenced in, in large. Yes, is it because the structures are different, right? Sure. And here's the thing: hearts between men and women are uh, like males and females are broadly the same, but exposure to different hormones also changes their functionality to some degree. Sure. Which, because the brain is so plastic, we would expect that to be very similar. And I, if you talk to trans women, for example, they're going to report a lot of really similar experiences in like emotionality and volatility yep. and stuff that we see more commonly in women who are also exposed, obviously, to estrogen and progesterone. So, um, 
we're still teasing apart what's causing this specifically. Sure. Um, the question of nature and nurture is complex. Obviously. Yes.